Welcome back to the Team Nerd Herd podcast, where our best advice is if you want to do it right, collect what you like. But on this session of Dropping the Mic, it's collect what you read, read what you collect. We are starting off. I'm solo dolo. Alonzo uh, had some uh, family business going on. You know, he's enjoying that weekend. So I told him, I'll take it solo, my brother. I will take it solo. But much, much love to Alonzo and much, much love to the Team Nerd Herd podcast at 7 p.m. You guys, don't forget top picks of the week. Don't forget to check the rewinds on my man Sparks. He promised me comics. He did the FOC. Don't forget to step into Saturday. I got a little half stepping right there. Step back to Saturday. You got the Spine Ticks rewind. You got, what do you got? You got the BLCC, the biggest little city collectors, man. I mean, you got my man Raging Cajun Comics, you know, with the Zora's Tigers. That happened earlier, man. So, I mean, there was a lot, a lot of context. So low. let's go ahead and give those shout outs to that community. Without further ado, let me go ahead. And shout out our team, Nerd Herd Moderators. What's going on, brother Rudy? Brother number one. What's going on, brother? Something Wong. You know something white's always going to happen. And I think I saw him in the crowd just a little earlier. So much, much love to my brothers. And brother number three, Deanime, Exeterra, Deanime, etc. Senpai. Oh, yeah. And then the music. Much, much love to DJ Abomination and playing Close D. Right. Always repping. Horde, son. All right, so right there, I just nailed it right out the park. Something Wong got his popcorn ready for a drop the mic. Hopefully, there's no screech. What's going on? Desired Comics, the man, the myth, the legend, my brother Nigel, pillar of the community. Much, much love. Bam, Rage and Cajun Comics. Woo, he's in the building. Welcome back. Welcome back to the drop the mic session. This one, it feels like a long time. What's going on to my blood brother, Eric the Phoenix, rising up from those ashes and spreading those fiery wings? Manana, manana, manana is. The four at four of Blade of the Immortal. And you got Brother Rudy, man. Brother number one, Rudy Rolling Strong, another pillar to this community, man. Always, always. Man, this this right here pumps my anime heart to death. Look at this. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Uzumaki, the two best, man. Just what's cracking, man? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Oh, the chat just jumped on me right now. Uh, let me go ahead. I saw Sheena right there. Yay. Yay, Steve. In my head, that's how I hear it, Sheena. HK Wifey 420. Much, much love, girl. You know I love you. Lord Chucks from the BLCC, the biggest little city collectors. Rapper and Horde. If you guys forgot to check the rewind, go ahead and check the rewind. My man, Comics and Pops, what's going on, my brother? You know, we we, we Alonzo's out there just chilling, cold maxing, relaxing, enjoying the Sunday. Much love, much love, y'all. All All right, guys. All right. I think we are all set and ready and raring to go. So my selection for the Drop the Mic um, was Eat the Rich by Boom Studios. Don't want to get the glare right there, right? Eat the Rich by Boom Studios. Um, In looking at the synopsis, uh, it was one of my picks of the week um, for top picks of the week on Sunday. And um, it is a Boom Studios title. You got the writer of Sarah Gailey, um, or Godly, pardon me if I'm saying this incorrect, artist uh, Pius Bach, colors by Ramon uh, Tito, and then the lettering is by Cardinal Ray. So, oh, my man, panel surfing, what's going on? If you guys miss, uh, go back to the Low Grades Friday, man. Low Grades Friday is the way you want to close it out, man. They've been producing mad quality content man and i i've been getting the they always make me laugh man they're just hilarious man they're a great bunch i love the chemistry over with those folks man much much love to my boys man and then you got glenn 2k horror hermano man what's going on glenn 2k all right so um eat the rich i thought um right out the gate i was like okay it's a horror title it's an independent title your boys gotta got your boys gotta get it you know you boys gotta get it so the, the synopsis really starts off. It's, it's I think this is a great story uh, and I'm willing to see what's going on for issue three because issue two, they left you off at a cliffhanger. Issue one, they left you off at a cliffhanger as well. Um, I think they've done that really well. The team has been, the colors that are used, um, the setting the tones, um, the facial gestures in all the art and even the, the storytelling really lends um, you know, it, it, they really lend to each other. So this is the best part about this. There's characters, two characters that are going um, to meet. Okay, so a- Aster is the person that's going to take his girlfriend, Joey, 
to meet his parents. Okay. So you kind of think, oh, okay, this is going to be, you know, um, the, the nervousness and, and it's, that's exactly what it is. It sets in where Joey is in her head saying, I can't believe I'm doing this, you know, um, oh, G rails 24 seven. You're right. You're right, man. Boom studios has been killing it. If I'm not highlighting guys, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of going to go over the, the, the story with you guys kind of give you a synopsis of issue one kind of leading into issue two. So I will get in as we get a brief pause for a sip of water, you know, for a sip of water. But, um, okay, so Joey's going to meet Astor's parents. They are going to the place that is called the Bluffs, Crestfall Bluffs, Crestfall Bluffs. And uh, Joey is in her head. She's saying, I can't believe I'm going to meet his parents. Um, and I think Astor is also dealing with a lot as well. There's a lot of turmoil that we kind of get to shed some light on and from, from the beginning. And I think that's great that, they're lending itself to like personal, like uh, personal issues that one is having, you know, at, at first you're thinking, okay, well, Joey got to meet the parents. She's have to set an expectation, you know, and then you got Aster who, who you find out is more nervous because he's stopped drinking, you know, he's straight out of college. He's in like law school, something to that effect, but it's wearing on him. I think he might've had a problem drinking. He's been drinking since he was 12 in these like, greetings or like these uh parties that that their 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 families are having and so he's sitting there he's going to meet a friend called bumper his long 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 you know friend that he's known his name's bumper i also had a friend named bumper as a matter of fact that's crazy but bumper is party guy works for turbo tax there's going to be a meeting and in this meeting um joey is kind of I think she's kind of doubting herself in the sense that she's looking like, hey, you know, uh, I've never met these type of people. I'm going to have to um, set an expectation. And you get to the point where they're talking to each other. They have this, you know, like a uh, couple struggle, you know, like they're there for each other. And they finally get to meet the parents. Uh, Pipe is uh, or Pip is the father figure. And um, this place is compound. I, I look like a compound or a beauty home. But they get to the house. They have security um, taking Joey's bags. She's a little nervous. She doesn't realize she has a hair clip that is a paper clip on her head. She's just all disheveled and she's nervous. And uh, the family are are real like they're rich. They are just super rich. The house is beautiful. And there's this moment where Joey is uh, meeting everybody. She's talking to um, the mother and the father. They're taking her through the tour and. There, there's something that sets in that she doesn't, I don't, I don't know whether she feels right or not, but um, neither is Aster. Aster is kind of having his problems. They go to this party and um, this party is set up for uh, retirement, but it's a roasting. So um, you get to see Aster meeting his friend Bumper. Bumper is the person that's going to, Bump Nick is going to be the person that's going to roast uh, Mr. Healy. Healy is a groundskeeper um, on the premise. And this is where it really sets in. They're kind of um, roasting this guy. And, it, you know, Joey's like, what's going on? You know, like, what is going on with this, you know, roasting of this guy? And he's like, oh, well, when they retire, this is what we do. Um, the, the one thing I, I got to kind of rewind back to is since Aster has stopped drinking, uh, Pip offers Joey um, a drink. and she's going to take but she forgets that aster's trying to not drink so she, she feels like she's already messed up there she's already messed up with aster and she's kind of showing her you know uh her true colors and it, it's just it's not even in aster's wheelhouse he's just like oh vodka and tonic but she goes and walks it off at the beach this is where she meets um the nanny patel okay um and in meeting the nanny they she is um holding the younger brother his name is cartwright and they're at the beach and they're having a conversation they're saying you know like she's saying hey you you look like you have something wrong with you and um something's bothering you and she's saying oh well you know like i wasn't really prepared to meet his family um also she's kind of questioning you know patel and um there's an odd moment there's a cool panel where it's uh, the kid is given the paper clip 
in Joey's hair, but it's mixed up with something that's in the sand. And it's a jaw, guys. It's a jawbone. And he took a bite out of it. He starts crying. Uh, and oddly enough, you know, like that uh, Patel kind of tells her, hey, if, if you're going to fit in here, you have to act the part. Do not help the help because that's going to single you out. And um, there is your first clue, right? Once we get into this roasting, they're roasting um, Mr. Healy. You know, that's such a classic name, Mr. Healy, right? And they're roasting him to the point where he's sitting there, he's sad, um, and you don't you really know what's going on, but he's getting ready to leave. And um, Joey is in the midst of conversa- having a conversation with some of uh, Astro's friends, and she's feeling really singled out because she has this dress. They're kind of like picking and prying at her with words, passively, aggressively hitting her. You know, she's wearing pearls and they're, you know, telling her, oh, how retro. So she goes out for some air. And as she's going out, guys, this is the end of the first issue. You're seeing Mr. Healy like taken off and somebody running after him. One of the family members running after him. I think it's Pip. And he tackles him and like he just starts filleting him, cuts his hand off his leg, you know, and Joey is in the corner witnessing this in the dark. She's seeing this and. You know, she's saying, what do I do? Run. Uh, you can't you can't let them see you. And it ends right there. So, I mean, right there, you're getting the cliffhanger. You're getting uh, an instance of Joey witnessing, you know, somebody being dismembered, not even knowing like what's going on. She does feel like the house is weird. She does feel like the people are weird. It's, it's just kind of like um, a lot to take in for her. And in the second issue, we really open up with we open up with her laying down with Aster and she wants to talk to her boyfriend. She wants to tell her what she saw and she really can't because he's drugged up. He's, he's kind of uh, on pills, uh, I guess it's for anxiety. And it kind of leads you to believe that maybe Aster is dealing with that issue and knowing what has happened uh, a little bit of what we're going to get maybe in the third issue. And, and we've already seen it in issue one. So we know that there's killings there. It's just unquestionable to Joey. However, you know, what's going to happen in issue three? So that's what we're going to see, right? Issue two, let me see. Look into these eyes. Dude, that just caught me right off. Let me just kind of take a pause, guys. Let me take a pause from just rambling on from issue two and go very visit our chat. I think the the thing about our group chat, man, I love, we got the vapes. I love uh, the community, man. I love that everybody chit chats with each other. We're all like right here. Ross says we are all on the same wavelength, man. Now, I might have missed the joke, but who knows? Gene, I said that horrible. All right, guys. So let me get uh, some water. Ross, much love, bro. All right, let me get some water. And then we're going to hit issue two, guys. And refreshing okay so issue two she's with joey's witnessed this uh horror you know filet mignon type of cutting guy's death she's sitting in bed she's trying to wake up aster aster takes medication so i gotta believe that they're gonna get into a little bit more why he's been drinking why he stopped why it's such a a a major thing for him um I, i know that's a major thing to kind of highlight but he really emphasizes that it, it, it's just a real problem. I don't want to be around there doing that. Um, so he's taking pills. She kind of wakes him up and tells him, so, like, we'll talk about it in the morning. And in that morning, like, they're kind of moving around within the family. Um, but she meets up with Petal again. And and Petal's like, in the first issue, she says, hey, did, did they tell you? Like, did they warn you? On the beach in their conversation. Um, now you get a little more of what happens because she goes to Petal. She's trying to tell her what's happening. Petal's like kind of enlightens her and shed some light on w- what was going on and what the family does, why they do this. Um, and in this, I think um, with this book, I think bringing in like real life problems um, lends itself and, and, and kind of expands that story because you find out that the reason why they sign up for these jobs is to help pay for um for in petals um 
instance or circumstance, she needs insurance, health insurance. And we all know that's expensive. That's just a all expensive thing to kind of have a health insurance and to have peace of mind. And she has a lot of things that she's needed done to her. Um, so she signs up for that. And there's a stipulation in this contract that, you know, like at the very end, when you retire, you're, you're to be killed and eaten. And, um, you know, Petal tells Joey that, and Joey's just kind of like unnerved. She's just like, I don't know what to do. You know, um, you got Aster kind of distancing himself in some sort of way, but still being with his family. Um, there's conversations in the midst that are happening. So you're kind of left with, you know, what, what's going to happen next. Um, and in the end, you, you see Joey being taken off, um, you know, taken with Pip's, Pip's wife, the um, Aster's mother. And she's saying, hey, I just want to talk to you about what happened last night. And that's it. It just ends it. And it leaves you like on a cliffhanger. You're like, uh oh, like she must have found out that, you know, like this is days of our lives, guys. I mean, she must have found out that she saw what was happening to good old Lawrence Keeper Healy, you know? But uh, let me go ahead and walk back. Uh, walk back. Bam, look at this. He's been here the whole time. Bam. Let's see, guys. Bussin', bussin'. Fast and Furious. Oh, okay. All right, Glenn. I'm going to check it out. Family. You're right. You know, like, you got you got a, a family that is just whacking people, dude. Like, and, you know, there is there is no justice here, man. This is just, you know, like, wholesome, good eating. So we'll see. Yo, yes. Petal is way too calm with that reveal that they're going to eat you. Um you know, like she's more or less like in that second issue, she knows what she signed up for. I think it's Joey kind of having to come to terms with what's going on, you know, because to her, it's new. And I, I kind of think Joey has a kind of a bit of history, too, because she she's always kind of like going back to how am I going to deal with these people? Um, I got to fit in with them. How am I going to fit in with them if I um and by Aster's side. And I think Aster is maybe trying to bring her on to the firm that he works for. So that kind of puts her in a, in a bad situation. So, uh, man, it, it, it's it's dope, though. I really like it. I could see it uh, being, uh, you know, like a, a TV show. Um, more horror is always great for me. I mean, it, it's just the way you make it. And I think this way the story has been written, it, 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 it really... Um, catches you on the edge of your seat you know so i'm more and more worried for joey at the end of issue two than i was in issue one where she was just like oh my god what's going on but you know uh we shall susie un uncanny swag what's cracking my brother what's cracking oh my god you guys i would definitely recommend checking this book out this would be for somebody who is uh, involved in like that loves horror um loves independent titles and is looking to just kind of have those stories in their pc i think boom studio is doing great with their independent titles uh and, and they have a wide variety i mean if it's not horror um with the most recent kind of um releases of ma um you got wind that's something a totally different dynamic you got berserk you know berserker you know you got um Jeez, man, you got Power Rangers, you got Mighty Morphin. I mean, they really, you got Something's Killing the Children, which is another great horror. And I really think that they're they're doing a great thing here for us who love independent stories. I know we know we love the big two, but it's always great to kind of throw that in. You know what I mean? But man, all right. So I think I'm going to end it early, but does anybody have any questions on uh, Hard Pass? <laughs> Ross, why? Hard pass. I didn't I didn't get him, dude. He was like, no. The description did not bite. All right. Or it could be because of the Fast and Furious. All right. Yes, Boom has a lot of older uh titles that, that do kick ass. I do agree, Deanime. They they went back and did like Hellraiser, I believe. Um yeah. Ross, it was a hard pass, bro. Oh, okay. 
Seven Secrets is also good as well. I got to say, uh, J Rails 24 7. I totally agree. That's one story that I've kept up with and uh, from the beginning. <laughs> Yay, Steve. All right. All right, guys. I demand we finished early, but let me go ahead and kind of um, let you know what we got going on, you guys. So at 7 p.m., we got top picks of the week. We got special guests, Sparks Comics. FOC, he did it, he did that at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. his time, Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you also um, missed out their shows, go ahead and check their catalog. You Promised Me Comics with Caroline Comics, who's also our second guest. And then you got Comics Are Great, C-R-G, C-R-G, representing the NY Warriors. If you guys miss Coffee and Comics, um, with the NY Warriors on in the morning, guys, I, I highly recommend um, you get up. It's early for us Pacific Coast guys, but it's totally worth it. They got a good thing going on there. They talk about the shows. They kind of go over their uh, opinions and intakes that they're kind of seeing. Um, and man, with that being said, we got those three guests on topics of the week. Then we got on Monday, we got Eric the Phoenix with Fanime Talk. And then, you know, you got your introspective, you know, with Alonzo, you know, with, with JR, with my man Geek Driven, and with my man Azores. Jeez. And then we got the Mondo Mail Call. So we got a busy week, guys. Also, definitely check out the community shows as well if you can and get your reading on. Now, I don't have a title for next week because I went over issue one and two really quick, but I will be going over another title. There will also be some, like, different things that are going to be in the mix that I'm going to be working on. Um, hopefully you guys will tell me what you guys think. If it's a total pass, let me know. If it's something that you guys like seeing, then let me know as well. But without further ado, your boy is going to go ahead and sign off, sayonara, and say thank you guys, much, much love, and be on the lookout. Our best advice is if you want to do it right, collect what you like. But on this segment of Dropping the Mic, it's collect what you read. And with that being said, my, my people, much, much love. Peace.